what's up you guys sorry for making the video a day late I wasn't feeling that great yesterday so I was able to film but by the time it came to editing the video I actually just started feeling really bad so I just decided I'm gonna post it today so I love you guys and enjoy hello beautiful world now today we are going to be making some wonderful sugaring wax and we're going to be doing the hard wax not the soft wax that requires some fabric strips here's what you're going to need you're going to need a beautiful pot just like this one a few of these jumbo craft sticks or you can use uh, a sort of spatula that kind of looks like a butter knife but is not actually a butter knife because you don't want to hurt yourself you're gonna want some sugar and you're going to want a quarter cup of water and a quarter cup of lemon juice this is about two whole small lemons so just so you know this is a cup of sugar, okay? And you're going to need two cups of sugar for the hard wax. One cup of sugar if you want to make the soft wax that requires the fabric strips. Okay, so you're going to want to add the two cups of sugar. Or if you are going to use the soft wax then it's just one cup of sugar I'm going to add a quarter cup of lemon juice quarter cup of water and you're just going to let it boil for five to seven minutes and also mix this all together so that you can actually have that hard wax effect remember boil for five to seven minutes the great thing about sugar waxing is that it is an ancient remedy to remove body hair. And people in ancient Egypt have been using it. So one of the other amazing things is that there are no harsh chemicals. So unless you're allergic to lemons or water or sugar, then you're not going to have any reaction when trying to remove body hair and it's great for when you don't really want to be shaving every single day to have that smooth skin because I can tell you from experience shaving every single day to keep my skin smooth and helping me feel comfortable with my body it's a hassle so it'll be nice to have my skin smooth for a couple weeks when using this wax, it'll stay completely bare for a week or two, depending on how fast your hair grows back, and it'll actually start to grow afterwards, but very slowly and thinner than usual, especially if you're coming back from shaving. Um, the hair will be thinner. If you're not sure if you're going to be using all of the wax, then be sure to have a jar handy like this one. For me, I am choosing a plastic jar since I am epileptic and dealing with glass jars is not very safe for me. However, if you are choosing to use a glass jar, then be sure to heat the jar a bit before adding the wax to the jar so that it prevents the glass from shattering going to know that the wax is finally ready when you see this beautifully rich brown color in the pot. Once you know that it is ready, you are going to take it off of the hot stove top and let it cool for a couple of minutes before putting it in the jar. Now what you're going to do with the glass jar, you're going to wait uh, a few minutes uh, and with the plastic jar you're going to wait a little bit longer but I suggest for both of these types of jars to wait until it is quite cooled down but it is still liquidy enough so that you can transfer it to the jar without any 
struggle. Now, I just tried to put the wax into the plastic jar and that was a mistake. It looks like I am absolutely going to have to use a glass jar. So that means I'm going to have to actually warm up the jar um, before I put the wax inside the jar. And it has to be warm enough so that it's not going to shatter the glass when I put the wax inside. But by then the wax will be cool enough, I guess, so that there won't be any risk of that happening. Another thing is that I probably didn't wait long enough to actually transfer the wax to the jar and that is why it deformed the plastic jar. So now I am going to wait and I'm actually going to time the amount of time that I wait and I suggest waiting maybe 10-15 minutes before actually trying to transfer the wax. So from what I have seen from other DIYs telling you how to make this wax, they only say leave it for a couple minutes before uh, transferring to the jar. And what I have noticed is that you have to actually let it cool down for about half an hour before actually transferring it to the jar and actually stir it during that time so that the wax does not harden on the outside part of the pot um, so that it is still easy to transfer when it cools down enough. Now what I have decided to do instead of transferring it to a jar I actually have this stainless steel cup that I got from Buskerfest that I'm going to use for the wax. That way it is not dangerous for me to handle um, because it's not glass and it won't be damaged by the amount of heat uh, from the wax. Once you do transfer the wax into the preferred container, you're going to let it cool down a little bit more, about 10-20 minutes, until it is actually cool enough for you to touch with your finger. And um, not too cool that you can basically just stick your finger in it, it still has to be a little bit warm so that it is not completely solid in the cup. So when you are trying to apply it to your skin, you can actually scoop it out. What I suggest here, and what I have seen in many of the videos, is that you actually take some of the wax, let it cool for a bit, You're going to want it to harden just a bit, so that it looks like this, so that you can actually touch it. If it is too hot, then wait for it to cool down a little bit more, but you're going to want it to feel kind of, not too liquidy, but kind of tacky like this, so that you can actually spread it uh, on the area that you would like to wax. Now with the waxing, you're going to want to apply it against the grain. So, the opposite way of which the hair is growing. And then you're going to want to take it off uh, the exact opposite, which is the actual way that it is growing. So basically, if your hair is starting from here and it grows this way, you're going to want to apply it this way and then take it off this way. See what I mean? Now, throughout the past few weeks of letting my hair grow, I have been watching multiple videos on how to apply it and how to actually do the waxing safely so that I don't damage my skin or hurt myself in any way. And I suggest you do the same. I suggest for you to watch many videos, multiple videos, 
not when you're tired so that it doesn't register in your brain, but multiple videos on a regular basis until the point that you actually do want to uh, apply the waxing. This way you can have a safe and successful waxing session. Another thing that I would suggest is that you start first on uh, not so sensitive areas like your calf or your shin so that you can get a hang of it especially if it's your first time but I suggest starting with your calf or shin every single time regardless of how many times you've done this waxing yourself because of the fact that it takes a while for the hair to grow back uh, so that you can have a period of time to actually get back into the groove of how to do it. Then after doing your legs, work up to um, a little bit more sensitive areas and work your way up from there. I hope you enjoyed that video on how to make your own sugar wax. I love you guys so much and if you like that, please come back for more. Like, subscribe, and be sure to tell your friends. I swear it's not a chore. Be sure to check out my other channels. My comedy channel and my vlog channel. My comedy channel for more laughs on Thursdays. And my vlog channel to see what I'm up to every day. Stay tuned for my video tomorrow on my comedy channel to actually see the hilarious waxing. Love you guys so, 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 so much.